Welcome back to the Camilla Tomney Show this morning. Now, I'm delighted to be joined by Roger Bootle, former chief uh, economist for the HSBC Group and chairman of Capital Economics. Roger, a rare uh, voice in favour of Brexit before mm. it happened. We'll get on to that in just a moment. I'm intrigued by your reaction to Liz Truss bringing back the spectre of Trussonomics. Mm. What's your reaction to that? I mean, did she make a cogent argument badly or...? What's your view? Well, I was really very much supportive of her agenda. That's to say the tax take has got much too high. It needs to come an awful lot lower. We need to deregulate. We need to go for growth. I was in favour of that. But I thought the execution was simply appalling. Yeah. She went at it much too fast. And also the manner was completely wrong. Now, you might think, you know, as far as markets are concerned, they're not bothered about the manner and the style. But they are, because these things convey something. So abolishing the top rate of tax, which, again, I'm in favour of in principle, doing it that day when you uh, took uh, away the limit on bankers' bonuses. Yes. Uh, and then uh, the Chancellor, as he was at the time, going on to television on the Sunday and say, oh, there's an awful lot more of that yes, to come. More to come. Yeah, exactly. That's what really spooked the markets. I think if it had been done differently, in a different style and more modestly and less quickly, I think she could have got away with it. But what about this characterisation, the front page of the Sunday Telegraph, the headline is, I was brought down by the left-wing economic establishment. I mean, is that an accurate portrayal of who she referring to there? I guess a mixture of the Treasury, the Bank of yes. England, the markets themselves. Yes. Are they all left-wing? Well, the markets certainly aren't anything they're conservative supporting. Uh, I think it's a bit unfair that. Uh, it's true to say that they would have been sceptical, to put it politely, about her programme. That's true. But that's not what brought it down. It was this appalling execution. And one of the things that I think undid her plan was that she hadn't realised just how febrile the markets were. Uh, I've heard her say this. She said, that, look, uh, during the pandemic, Rishi Sunak got away with dishing out squillions and then more squillions, yes. and the markets didn't seem to bat an eyelid. And yet these comparatively smaller sums, they did ball cat. I don't think she and the Chancellor quite realised how different the market circumstances were. Although, does she make a good point about the OBR putting the government in a so-called straitjacket, mm. in the sense that she makes the point that when Sunak was giving out the furlough cash, there mm. wasn't an OBR forecast? Mm. And we've heard this a lot. You know, a lot of people, particularly on the right of the party, say, when have the IMF and the OBR ever been right about anything? Mm. Well, there's something in that. I, I take a different view about the OBR. I think, frankly, they should have done a forecast. And if you were aiming for the long game, which I think they should have been doing, it wouldn't have mattered, I think, so much. The IMF intervention, I thought, was scandalous, quite frankly, was politically motivated. In regard to Liz Truss, you don't yes. mean what they said last no. week about Britain I being mean, behind the Europe. Just right. explain that for the viewers, because the IMF came in and they basically made a quite political statement about her economic that's ideology. Right. Well, they came in and said they thought this was completely wrong and potentially dangerous. Uh, bizarrely, and of course there's some suggestion they did that at the behest of someone in the UK authorities. Right. It, it was a very unusual intervention. And then you can't, well, you can forgive Liz Truss then for thinking that the blob, the Remainer-leaning blob, mm. was working against her because we have historically heard these tales of chancellors going a bit native at the Treasury, mm. even Rishi Sunak as a Brexiteer, because the Treasury is absolutely obsessed with trade and other links to yeah. the EU and doesn't want to ro rock the mm -hmm. European economic boat. Do you recognise that character uh, characterisation? Yes, I think she was right about the economic establishment and the Treasury view. There is something wrong there. It's defeatist, it's against tax cuts, it seems to be in favour of a large state. On all these things, she was right. But I don't believe that there was some sort of conspiracy against her. The simple fact of the matter is, I believe, that she and her team simply came across as incompetent, as reckless. And if you're in the Treasury or the Bank of England, that's not good news. No. So, uh, and again, I think a lot of this comes back not to her ideas, but to the style and the speed of what she was trying to do. Can we have an honest appraisal from you about what negative impact Brexit has had on the current economic climate? Mm. Well, first of all, I don't agree with all those people who say that it's hit 
GDP, reduced GDP by 4.123 recurring. Uh, the thing that astonishes me about this is the confidence with which they opine on this. The simple fact of the matter is we don't know. We never know in economics, by the way, because we never know the counterfactual. That's to say what would have happened in the absence of the event that we're talking about. And in this particular instance, the difficulty is even greater because since the Brexit vote, we've had a global pandemic, lockdowns, uh, uh, an energy crisis, and war in Europe. Now, they, they might have had an impact, you know. Yes. So we simply cannot tell. Having said that, my view is that probably Brexit has cost the economy something. I would hesitate to put a number on it, something. But the reason I say that is that um, if you go back to the Brexit debate, there was, of course, a discussion between pros and antis about what the economic effects would be. And I think the general architecture of this debate was quite clear. We thought that leaving the, the single market would be a net negative mm -hmm. for the economy, and I agreed with that. And as against that, there was the possibility of striking free trade deals around the world and deregulating. Now, what we know has happened is that we have le left the single market, and there have been losses from that, as we expected. There have been very few trade deals, and in particular not the big one yes. with America, and we've hardly deregulated at all. So I think structurally it wouldn't be surprising to see that the economy has been hit a bit. And do you think it's an error, because it would have been under Liz Truss's watch as Foreign Secretary, not to have secured that trade deal with America, or was it always going to be many years off? I think it was always going to be many years off. It's not going to be easy, even if we get a Republican in the White House. Uh, but with a Democratic president, and certainly Joe Biden, it's frankly not on. And um, we also uh, look at the CPTPP, mm. the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. That's obviously a good thing for the British economy. But again, has the government progress on all this been just glacial? Yes, it has. It's amazing how little has been achieved. I mean, some things. And I don't want to underestimate the difficulties. It's not easy to join something like that. But that's potentially very, very big news because the countries involved in that are growing quite fast. Their importance in the world economy is increasing. By contrast, what a lot of people in this country don't appreciate is that the share of the EU in the world economy has been falling quite fast and it's set to continue falling quite fast. Just generally, with regard to trying to reassure the viewers, I mean, they couldn't have more bad news at the moment. At every turn, there is some sort mm. of negative economic forecast. Bills are going up here. OK, we, we do have the promise of inflation coming down. Mm. Um, we've heard that the IMF basically say that Britain is behind the rest of Europe mm. when it comes to recovery. What's your analysis of the next two years? Do we actually have anything to look forward to come 2024-25? Yes, big time. I think this year is going to be pretty bad. I don't know whether the IMF's right or wrong about the UK. It's often wrong, by the way. Uh, but uh, even so, and I'm an optimist in general, I, I, I think this year is going to be pretty poor. Uh, consumer real incomes are going to be squeezed. The housing market's falling. Interest rates going up. Inflation, although coming down, is still very high above mm. wage rises. So it's going to be grim. What I think a lot of people don't appreciate is how much better next year is going to be, assuming we don't get intensification of global energy crisis. It's going to be a lot better. Inflation is going to be down, well down by the end of this year and continue falling sharply next year. Interest rates will peak. The housing market will stabilise. The public finances will look better. Unemployment will, well, it's going to go up, mm. will probably have stabilised by the end of this year. Next year, I think we could see a real bounce in the economy. Oh, fingers crossed. Did you think the Bank of England was right to put interest rates up to 4% in the week? Some people were thinking it wouldn't be that high. And do you think they're going to stabilise at that point? No, I think the bank was right. I've been a hawk on interest rates for some time. Although inflation is coming down and it's going to fall, I think, quite rapidly, the problem is underlying inflation because the published inflation rate, the headline inflation rate, is coming down because last year's big rises in costs are dropping out of the annual comparison. Meanwhile, pay rises have been going up. They're running at between 6 and 6.5%. Six and, and that's the key to the underlying rate of inflation. The fact is that the labour market is too tight yes. for a variety of reasons. Pay rises are too rapid. And so the bank is going to have to be quite tough, I think, 
to squeeze the labour market, not a nice thing to have to do, but it's what you have to do to get inflation under control. We'll get on to wages in just a minute, but just on the bank, mm. I mean, have they presided over catastrophic economic policy for far too long with ultra low interest rates and quantitative easing? And actually, they're the ones who should be blamed for storing up what we're now faced with, particularly when it comes to homeowners. Where else were interest rates ever going to go but up? Mm. Well, I I'm not going to bash the bank. I do think they've made some mistakes, but frankly, this was a very, very difficult situation to have to deal with. Now, there are some people, purists, who argue that quantitative easing was completely wrong. We should never have had interest rates that low. Mm. I don't agree with them. The fact of the matter is that the economy looked to be terribly weak. And once the bank had got interest rates down to 0.1, so I think the bottom rate, uh, what they had in the locker then was QE and they had resort to it. I think it was the right thing to do. Their mistake, I would argue, was not to have recognised that the economy was recovering sooner, that inflation was rising quite alarmingly, and that the labour market was much tighter. So I don't complain about what they did then. I just think they should have changed more rapidly. They should have put interest rates up faster. And a very brief mo uh, word on just the strikes and wages. Mm. Uh, they are going to be inflationary if they give the likes of public sector workers, nurses, teachers, etc., too much of a pay rise, aren't they? There's no doubt about it. The fact of the matter is that Britain has become poorer because of the increase in international energy prices, and that's bound to hit the real income comes on average. And of course, lots of people around the country, understandably, don't want it to be them. So yes. they're taking action saying, let it not be us. But someone's got to bear it. And if they get compensated, then that will simply increase the burden on other workers. And finally, corporation tax. Mm. We know how unpopular this rise is, particularly among small and medium sized businesses mm. who had a terrible pandemic. An extra 6% shaved off profit margins. Should Jeremy Hunt go ahead with that in the budget, do you think? Well, I think not. Again, this is a, a case in which I think Liz Truss was on, on the right lines. It's not an enormous amount of money it's raising. It's giving all the wrong signals, particularly when the business world is worried about the consequences of Brexit. I wouldn't be doing it. Roger Bootle, thank you very much indeed you. for joining me this morning.